There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night, roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country, and there is no escaping it, no matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome into another edition of Beyond the Darkness. I'm Tim Dennison for Dave Schrader, who has the night off tonight. Um, we have an exciting show tonight, folks, and a very spooky show at that. And we'll get to it here in just a second. And I want to remind people that we're just right around the corner from Chicago Ghost Con, the last appearance that Dave and I will be at together for the year. Uh, Chicago Ghost Con happens the weekend of October 6th. It's coming up. It's just a few weeks away. And there are very few tickets available left for the event. I think less than 50 of, uh, left for this event. You want to get your tickets right now. There's a banner up at darknessevents.com. That's darknessevents.com. I myself will be speaking on conspiracy theories. Dave has a talk as well at the event. And uh, we're going to have a great time. It's, uh, it's at some historic places there in Chicago. I believe there's even some investigations that are available for the uh, weekend. And... I know you people have been uh, keeping up on the American Ripper series. Jeff Mudgett will be out there. Um, lots of good stuff out there. Chicago Ghost Con this year. So join us out there. Get your tickets right now. Go to darknessevents.com. Click on the banner and join us out there at Chicago Ghost Con. That's the weekend of October 6th. We're looking forward to it. And again, it's the last date this year that Dave and I will be together at uh, at one of these events. And we're looking forward to being out there in Chicago uh, that weekend in October. Our show tonight, folks, is uh, is an interesting one, to say the least. You know, we we get lots of different emails from people, especially for Parashare, about their experiences, uh, and we we hear a lot about extreme hauntings at times too. But uh, this one, uh, this one is is uh, just kind of off the chain, and we had to uh, we had to bring this gentleman on. Charles Brandon is in Brooklyn, New York, and has. A tale that you're not going to believe, but we want to jump into it right a lot, right away, uh, having to do with his house in Brooklyn. And uh, I've seen some of the pictures, Charles. And by the way, welcome to uh, Beyond the Darkness. Thank you, Tim. I've seen some of the pictures, and and I tell you, you know, <laughs> I the first thing I'll say off the bat before we get into it, explaining what exactly how how you came about about this house and everything is. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you had a bunch of uh, kids who could crawl walls and, and people who could crawl walls and ceilings, and they got really dirty hands, and they're all over the place. I mean, there is stuff all over the walls and ceilings would have, in your house. I would have to interject and say that it's physically impossible for any human to put these marks on the ceilings or walls. Because oh, exactly. I try. There's, I, I would imagine that the... People, they don't like to be called ghost spirits. They like to be called people. Uh, they have something on their hands or whatever. Uh, a very uh, interesting fact is that my landlord came into the house about six months ago and painted the walls. And that was another, you know, he, he looked at the walls and he actually said to me, he's like, what the, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> My, me and my landlord are friends, okay? We, okay. we drink, we're, 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 we're buddies. Even though he's my landlord, we're, we're, we're friends. And he just said, you know, what, what the, are you that bored? <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, I said, you know, uh, I'm not going to say his name on the air, but, right. you know, let's just say Joe. I said, Joe, I got something I got to tell you. I said, you know, that I've been telling you this for the past two years that your house is most likely worth millions and millions and millions of dollars that once it's discovered that this house can literally prove life after death and the paranormal and he goes that's what you've been trying to tell me all this time i said yeah 
He says, well, what's with the walls? I said, well, that's the ghost. They're writing all over the walls. And he was like, and then I took him in the bathroom and I showed him the mirrors. And he was, you know, there's a video on my YouTube channel about that. But, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't do it. I mean, you can send somebody over here and, and, and look and there's no, it's impossible. Whatever's going on, they're doing it. And we, we don't only have ghosts here, we have demons. Okay, the claw marks, like the ghosts, they write, and then the demons go over the writing. With I, I, I can't, I can't explain it. Well, I we'll really get, can. we'll get into that here in a bit, Charles. And I got to explain to people your 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 Skype. We're connected by Skype tonight, and your Skype is kind of getting a little muddy, and then it clears up, and then it gets a little muddy. And I got to tell people that before we started the the show tonight, I was talking to Charles a little bit off off air, and. And I kept saying, you know what? It, it disconnected, reconnected, it did all kinds of weird things. So if you hear Charles dip out a little bit, there's a reason for it. And he said even even so when he jumps on Skype from time to time that the spirits in the house mess with technology. So if we do have some some difficulties from time to time connecting to Charles, you'll understand why. So let's rewind a little bit first here, Charles, and, and tell people how it was that you came across this, this house to begin with uh, there in Brooklyn. Uh, well, I was being evicted from my other house, which was 45, 45, uh, uh, 450 square feet, which mm-hmm. was a hole in the wall. <laughs> and uh, my landlord had passed away, and uh, the new landlord wanted to you know, renovate the house and throw everyone out and use it for his family, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, uh, we left. And uh, we came here. The odd thing is we weren't even supposed to see this house. We were in another house. And I didn't like it. And the real estate agent was like, you know what? This other place just opened up. And, you know, let's go see it. And I fell in love with it. I mean, I came in. It's 1,500 square feet. It's a duplex. I mean, this place is a palace. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm carpeting all over the place i actually hate the freaking carpet now but when i first came here i was like wow look at all the carpeting i mean when you have kids and and animals carpet is no good (laughs) you can't have carpet uh the weird thing is is that i hurt myself the first day that i was here uh i ripped my hand open on the bathroom uh door somehow and i bled like a pig really yeah it was, I mean, it, it's pretty much ever since I've walked in here, I'm like the 21st century Job. I, I have experienced every single type of strife, tribulation, and adversity. Uh, every sickness and disease. I mean, since I was about to do this show, I want everyone to know that's listening to this, that's calling me a con artist or a liar or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going through great lengths to expose something that there's universal powers out there, meaning Lucifer. That doesn't want this to get out. Okay. So, so let me and stop. Had, l- let me stop you real quick, Charles. So you believe oh, yeah. that that whatever is in this house is something greater than just even like a lower level malevolent demon. You believe that you're dealing with the demon of all demons in your house. Yeah, I, I, be- I know it's Lucifer himself. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, I, I I know it's him. All right. Because because let me let me let me uh, clarify. Okay. There's only two entities. I'm a spiritual man, okay? I'm a man of God. Okay. That's why I walk by this house and his demons bow to me like I'm King Henry VIII. Because I have dealt with everything that this bastard has thrown at me and I'm still standing for seven years. So you've Uh, been dealing with this for seven years? Yeah. Uh, I only know two entities in my spiritual training. I can't really go into it, but... I'm very close to the Father, okay? In my, in my spiritual training, there's only two entities. Hold on a second. Sure. You want to come in, you want to go out. Make up your mind. That's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Cats are like that. You know, Dave and I have had a discussion on the show many times. And forgive me for saying this, Charles, but cats are dicks. That's, right. that's that's just the way it is. Cats are dicks. They don't ever, you know, want to. No, I, I, I love my cats. Oh, I'm sure. But, yeah. Uh, and, uh. I'm not anyway, saying they're not lovable creatures, but they're dicks. Uh, you know, they, 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 yeah, they, yeah. They, they can be. <laughs> anyway, I only know two spiritual entities that have the authority. Under spiritual law, no outside entity may interfere with natural events. I'll mm-hmm. say it again. No 
outside entity, because it violates free will, may interfere with natural events. And I know of only two spiritual entities that have the authority to do what I have seen, the manipulation of natural events that I have seen. And that's the devil and God. It's not God because he doesn't violate his own law. It's that bastard. All right. Because demons or whatever, they don't have this authority. There's times where I have to like lay down the rosary upon my computer to get it to work. I have gone to over 10 computers in this house. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it, the uh, I mean it's an, it's it's insane. Uh, uh it's it's absolutely insane what goes on here. And never mind how I'm hated and despised by my family members. I mean whatever's here, like I said, it, it, it's the devil. He he has got them like marionette puppets. Okay? Mm-hmm. I mean he's causing strife upon me. He's trying to kill me, I think. Well, Charles, you mentioned – I want to go back to the sicknesses here because you've mentioned that you've had just about everything under the sun. Run down for me for a moment. In the seven years that you've been there, some of the more unusual things you've had that, let's say, don't run in the family tree or things that that you know you don't have a family history of that you've come down with. Um, a few years ago, I was hit with bronchitis and pneumonia at the same time. Hmm. 90 days of hell. I didn't go to the doctor. I dealt with it on my own. I, I, I literally prayed for death every, every night. I'm walking around in a, a snorkeler in the summertime. You know, you, know, you, you want to have a joke. You know, when it's hot out and, you ha- and you're sick like that, yeah. you, you don't care. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was really bad. Like I said, I mean, I'm like the 21st century Joe. This, this son of a bitch has been trying to kill me for seven years. <laughs> but he can't. You know, I... Uh, when it first started, this is before I even knew what was going on. Mm. I would hurt myself about a thousand times a day. Like would, how so? Was, what what would happen where you would hurt yourself? Was it little things like you'd catch a nail or you? what would happen? How to explain it? Uh, just walking around, it was like the house itself was like reaching out and hurting me. Doors, stairs. Uh, carpet. I mean, the, the, the freaking cats attack me. Hmm. So I would imagine that something like jumps inside the freaking cats and it, and it, and it, and it gets me. See, I'm a man of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jesus is in me for evil to touch me. It would touch Christ. Therefore it cannot. So it uses the five element or four elements of the earth to touch me or other people. I know that sounds crazy, but no, like no. if I go to shake somebody's hand, mm-hmm. It'll squeeze my hand so tight. Or if I walk by my cat, it'll attack me and rip my leg open. I mean, if a doctor were to look at me, I look like Christ. I have so many scars from from what I have endured here. But I'm still standing, you son of a bitch. Excuse my language. <laughs> that's okay. I can understand you're a little angry. Um, let me ask you well, this. That's why, that's why I... I, I you know, like I said, the demons, his demons that that I walk by, there's like a hundred demons in this house, okay? It's not just one demon or two demons, and there's like thousands of ghosts. This is this house is like a weight station. I, I don't understand. I can't explain it really, but it's like every person that has ever died in Kings County, this is where they go. Not the house itself, but the land that it sits on. Well, how how do you know that? How how did you come to the, that number and, and that conclusion? And how do you know that that's what happens? Because I've been told. Who, to- the, who the, told you that? There's one spirit here. Her name is Kit. She's nine years old. Mm-hmm. I, I have video of her and uh, that I caught from the mirrors. The, the ghosts are not in the mirrors. They're reflecting from the walls into the mirrors. Okay, this is the loophole. See, there's a, there's a war going on right now. It's a coup. The ghosts of the world are so freaking tired of being left here, they're rising up. They're causing their own protest. And as you notice that in the past few years, the paranormal industry that was once dead is now so alive. Mm-hmm. Like you go on the news feeds, 
every day somebody, some news person, boredom therapy, viral nova, whatever, has some type of story of, of a ghost being caught. Because they have found a loophole in being seen. And that loophole is mirrored. They are reflecting off the walls because the dead are hidden. They're hidden in the walls. They're hidden in the carpets. They're hidden in the mirror, wherever. Whatever is inanimate, the dead can hide in it. I mean, they're hidden in it. We're not supposed to know. It's one thing to, to believe there's life after death or there's something else. It sure is a hell of another thing to know that there's life after death. <laughs> you, you know? Right, right. Now, gosh, there's so many questions here, Charles. I got to tell you. It, yeah, I know. Like I told Dave, I have like hours I could talk, not just like an, uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> well, I, let me let me start with this. Let, let me start with the first time that you're in the house that you realize that it's haunted. W- what happens? Give me the story. W- what do you see? Who do you see? How does it happen? You mean when I finally realize that it's be- that there's a haunting going on? Yeah. What well, when was the first time that you actually saw something, or you that you realize that this place is haunted? That that you've that you've got an active haunting going on? Well, the uh, you know just for the record, every house has the, the dead in it. That's where they're stored in the houses. You're sleeping. You might have a dead person sleeping with you. You don't know. They're everywhere. But some houses are wait stations, like I said, where more dead are stored other than another house down the street might have a few dead people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But there are other houses that have a lot. Like I have one video where there are so many lights and it's not like, like, like they say dust on, you know, this, this, this shows is thousands of, of spirits here. I have to be honest that, um, I was a skeptic. When I, when I moved in here in 2010, I was a diehard skeptic. I didn't believe in ghosts. I didn't care about ghosts. Anytime I saw somebody watching a paranormal show, I was like, you dumb idiot. What are you watching? This is God. <laughs> you know, like at the level of Michael Shermer. Skeptic. Mm, right, right. And I think what it was is that they, they chose me. The, the dead has chosen me to do this. To, to bring their message and to have their voice heard through me because they've seen everything. I'm a type of person, I'm, I'm not a quitter, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I will rot before I stop doing If I am convicted to something, I will rot before I stop doing it, okay? Uh, and I think they've seen that. And they came together as a collective whole, and I really think that it was this little girl, Kit, who writes her name all over the house where somebody ever came here, they would see it. And I mean, I have her in freaking mirrors. I mean, I, I have her in video, you know, you can't fake this. And if I had those skills, I'd be killing with Steven Spielberg in Hollywood. I wouldn't be poor like this. <laughs> I mean, what a 10 year old can do with Sony Vegas. I, it takes me months. <laughs> right. I, I understand. Now I don't even know how to work Photoshop. And nor do I have the, the program. And I'm willing to take a lie detector test or whatever. Anybody could come here and look at my computer. I don't even know how to use Photoshop. I don't mm-hmm. even have the program. Uh, the, the first time I realized that, the, that, I, that, that it was true, because it was my daughter that they went to first. Okay. okay, My daughter was the one that watched all the paranormal shows, blah, blah, blah. They went to her first. They needed for me to believe or to acknowledge before that I could accept. You understand? If you don't believe in something, you, you don't see it. Well, what happened, I mean, with, gonna... what happened with your daughter, Charles? What, how did they come to her and what happened with her? Well, she was in her room. She's going to kill me for saying this. She wanted me to say a different story, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I want to tell the truth. She was in her room with her Metro PC camera with no flash. Mm -hmm. caught an actual paranormal event taking place, a ghost coming through the wall. And she has it on on camera. This is the craziest ghost picture that has ever, ever been taken because I have seen every single ghost picture on the net because I researched it for a year when I saw this picture. She came up to me. She said, look at this picture I found on my phone. And it's, it's a Revolutionary War soldier. Hmm. You could see his uniform. You could see the brass buckle of his cloak. 
You can see the ruffles in his feathers. I mean, he looks like George Washington. Hmm. Believe it or not, this area where I live is ground zero for the Revolutionary War. Really? Yeah. If you look it up, Georgetown, Brooklyn, Redcoats and the and the and the uh, the colonists were here fighting on this very land. In fact, this area where I live was nothing but swamp land before they came in in the late seventies and started building. So why? On top of that war and on top of that conflict, do you believe that there's this giant portal not just for ghosts but for demons as well? Well, this is going to freak a lot of people out, but uh, the truth of the matter is when you die, you stay here. You don't ascend to heaven because no one's righteous enough to go there. Okay? You just gave us a commandment. Above all these, love each other. And if you love each other the way God loves us, then you won't kill, you won't steal, you won't deceive, you won't harm, you won't rape, you won't destroy. You'll protect that thing. But we violate that one law that God and Christ have given to us. Therefore, we are condemned to stay here. So when we die, our soul remains here. In some cases where you die, that's where your soul stays. In other cases, you're placed somewhere and you're surrounded by demons. It's right there in the scripture, Tim. Psalms 23, 4. For yea, I walk among the shadow of the valley of death. I shall fear no evil for my father is with me always. Now, if you're dead and you're in heaven, riddle me this. Why are you afraid of evil? Yeah, very true. I mean, I wouldn't be if I were in heaven. I mean, that's deep, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, people are going to learn some serious uh, secrets here tonight. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Charles. Let me let me take it one step further with you. But wait, I want to say that okay. there is a – wow, that's, that's mind-blowing because I watched this movie, Collateral Beauty, and uh, I never really got it. <laughs> and now I think I just got it, Collateral Beauty. Uh, even though we don't ascend to heaven – the beauty part is that the deceased, those that die, if a child is murdered or whatever, that child is around their parents at all times. They don't even know it. Okay? Okay. Well, that's the beauty part. When somebody dies in your life, if, they, if you're really close to them, mm-hmm. then they're around you. And, and there's, 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 you, know, you feel them. The, the, what I want to convey to people is it's very, very, very important and vital that you do not mourn them. You do not cry for them. You do not show them that you're miserable because your misery will impact them on the other side. So they have a lot of fighting to do because they're surrounded by demons. You don't, if you die and you don't have faith, you're going to have a really bad time. And I know that sounds brutal, but... You know, I'm being honest here. And like I said, if somebody wants to give me a lie detector test, Maury Povich or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, uh, you know, I'll pass it because what I'm telling you right now is, is true. Well, personally, I love Maury. If you get on Maury, I'd love to go on with you. Um, let nobody, me... will, nobody will talk to me, Tim. I have gone to every single paranormal show on the planet. Well, I, you know, I'm, and... I'm, I'm curious about this theory, and I want to ask you this question. Now, now you're saying that nobody – passes this earthly realm but let's let's throw in let's throw in some obvious ones mother teresa or some some people who have been canonized on earth as saints doesn't though, matter they're still here they're still here they're here even though they've done they've done better than average than on on earthly tasks or have been godly or godlike um or tried to aspire to the the will of god they still haven't escaped the earthly realm when you die, you stay here. Why are we not ascending to heaven? What What is it that's, I mean, because supposedly Jesus died on the cross for our sins, so that that way we could ascend to heaven. What, what went wrong? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't, been, I haven't been privyed on that information. <laughs> not to sound, not to make light of it. I don't know. I just know that in my mirrors, I have seen dinosaurs, I have seen cavemen. 
I have seen things, people of 1700s, 1600s, Roman looking people. And I have video of this. Okay. This is not like I'm just saying, uh, hearsay. I, I have, I, I have 430 unique videos online. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the professionals, the paranormalists, not to say not, not, nothing against them, but they have come after me like roaring lions. Oh, it's, it's, it's uh, reflections on tiles. It's light. It's this. I mean, every single inconceivable excuse that they could give me. And my response is, you know what? Maybe one face, two faces, but not thousand. Eyes, ears, nose, hairline. Impossible that that's simply reflections off tiles. And, and it's not, and, and I can do this anywhere in the house. Okay, uh, somehow, like, uh, I, I, I don't understand, but somehow, some way, the spiritual realm has connected itself to me where I can go anywhere in the world and summon the dead, and they will respond. And I can do it live with the cameras on me. Now, let me ask you this. Why is that? Is it that you've been immersed in this, this environment for seven years and they've taken to you? How is it that you can summon them at any I've point? Been I've been I've been given an authority. That's all I can say. Now, doesn't that scare you? Because you you say you come from a godly from a godly source or godly center, yet you're 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 practicing practicing necromancy here, Charles. I'm if, sorry. You say you come from a godly center or a godly source, but at the same time, you're saying I can summon the dead wherever I go. That's a form of necromancy, don't you think? It's a, it's a form of you know, or do you think that that authority is, is comes from a godly source as well? Well, if that authority came from God Himself, then what would you say then? I, then I wouldn't challenge. I, I mean, I'm not challenging you. I'm just saying that no, I'm not, asking you. I'm, I'm asking okay. you. Where do you think you where it comes from? Because you know, if you're taking, I, I mean, you've quoted the Bible here in our discussion. I can't, Tim. I, I, I can't say. I'm, I'm not allowed to say. I can't say. That's 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 the main story. Like when I'm in front of the cameras, right? Like one day when I have an press conference, mm -hmm. and I know that that day's coming, then that will be revealed. But uh, I can, and I have videos where I've done it. There was a uh, uh, corrections officer by the name of Anastasia Bryant, who was murdered a block away from where I lived. And I went over there to the spot where she died, and I summoned her soul. And I caught it on camera. You can see the light do a 360 turn in the air. And the minute I asked for it to come forward. Now, there's, is, a, there's a design around this. Is, is Anastasia stuck there then? I, I, I don't know. I just know that when I called her forth, I, I, I've gone to other houses like, you know, you can't go to somebody's house and say, let me look at, let me, you know, capture the ghosts in your house, you yeah, know, yeah. friends or whatever. So I have to do it on the DL. I go into people's bathrooms mm -hmm. and I film the bathrooms. I, I don't blame you. I mean, that's, it's a little, it's a weird kind of welcome wagon to show up and say, Hey, let me catch a ghost in your house. I mean, that and I've done it. I've done it in my, 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 my daughter's, uh, my my uh, a very well known paranormalist by the name of Steve Huff has argued the fact that dust orbs do not come in colors, do not come, do not move in patterns, and do not listen to verbal command. Mm -hmm. I have videos where I'm saying I'm speaking to the spirits that are in this house. Can you please move over this? Can you please do this? Can you please do that? And I have some really really crazy. Okay, crazy soul movement that there is no way on this God's green earth that that is a duck door. I have one that I just did where, I mean, unless I'm doing it with a flashlight, where the soul comes out, of the, when the, comes out of the wall, crawls along the wall. Okay, dust orbs are in the air. Would you agree to that? Yeah, yeah. Dust orbs are in the air. Okay, they're not, it, it, this crawls along the wall, right? Stops then proceeds up to the mirror, stops, then comes back to the place where it stopped before, stops, and then proceeds again and then crawls up the wall. I have lights that are doing... Uh, 
But Charles, how could, why wouldn't that oh, be? A, why wouldn't that be a bug though? A what? A bug? Like a bug? You know, because sometimes orbs can be bugs that are a light reflection off a bug. No, I'm no, asking. no. I, I'm in a bathroom, dude. Right? No, I know. That's there's what I'm no saying. Mi- but there's, there's no windows, nothing. It's just a bathroom. Right, but we we've we've had. Uh, have you seen Have you seen any of those videos? The one I'm you're talking, talking about? about? No, I haven't seen the one you're talking about. Can you look at it now? If um, you want to. It's not a long one. It's pretty fast. With the equipment I have in front of me right now, no, I can't, unfortunately. Um, okay, but, never mind. But uh, I, if I could, I would. I, I'm not going to lie to you. If I could, I would. Um, but but here's here's my point, is that a lot of times, and, and I'm just throwing the argument out there, Charles. I'm not doubting you. What I'm saying is, the argument is put out there that a lot of times orbs are dust bugs or, or other objects that are light refractions off of those objects, and that's how you form the orb. Um, and that's why I'm that's asking. Not, when you say that, something stops and then goes up the wall, an, a logical the, object that, that goes up the wall would be a bug, right? That's not the case with, with my videos. And, okay. and when, you, when you look at them, you'll do another show saying, I've seen these things and these are not bugs. Okay. Um, I tell you what, let's, uh, at this point, let's take our break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about the markings on the ceiling, on the walls. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Kit, this ghost Kit that's in your house, and get a little bit of background on, on this ghost. And much, much more. Our guest is uh, Charles Brandon, who has a very interesting house in Brooklyn, New York. Probably one of the most haunted houses you've ever heard of there in Brooklyn, New York. And when we come back... We'll explore more with Charles here on Beyond the Darkness. All right, let me break. If there's anyone here, you can speak to me now through this device. How many people are here with me right now? Where exactly are you? Welcome back to the Best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This is Beyond the Darkness. I'm Tim Dennison for Dave Schrader, who will be back tomorrow. Our guest is Charles Brandon. He has uh, one of the most unique haunted houses in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, we're in the midst of discussing that and many other things with him. Um, now, Charles, a lot of the videos that we were talking about in the last segment uh, are on your YouTube page, and, and tell people where they can find those videos. Uh, okay. I have to look at it because I don't. Sure. And and we should let people know while you're looking for the, the YouTube address – uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of Charles's videos, not just from from his his uh, house, but also from from other houses as well. Is that true, uh, Charles? Yes. Are, are available yes. at that YouTube uh, page? Yes, and the street. I, oh. I've done videos in the street. Okay, and is that one that from that uh, officer that Anastasia? Is that one on there as well? Yes, the corrections officer yeah. was murdered about a block away from my house. And I went over there and I summoned her soul and it, and it came out. It's, it's in a video. I've done it twice, actually. Okay. So, so all of that is at uh, Charles' uh, YouTube site. And uh, the, your YouTube site is where again? It's called A Brooklyn Haunting. Okay. And is it abbreviated at all or is it just A no, Brooklyn Haunting? No, it's just a, a Brooklyn Haunting. That's the... That's the uh, What's the word I'm looking for? That's the brand name that I created. Okay. And, and it says, A Brooklyn Haunting by Mark Slade. That's an alias of mine. Sorry. I have children. You know, I, I have to fine. protect myself. And yeah. you could see the the background. It's black border, and it's in red spooky letters. A Brooklyn Haunting by Mark Slade. Okay. And the cover photo is a picture of a door. And I tell you what, we'll we'll put up the uh, link as well on our podcast one page, and okay. uh, I'll put up a link in the uh, podcast description as well for the show so that people my, can find it. If they just go to my Twitter account, mm-hmm. they can find everything there. Everything's there. And your Twitter handle is? 
Um, yes, my Twitter account is. You see that? <laughs> oh yeah, you're asking me. Okay, capital I, capital B, capital K, capital L, capital Y, capital N underscore haunting capital H and then regular uh, letters. Okay. So and to know that you're on the right Twitter account, you'll see. Uh, actually, Tim, if you look at that account, you'll see that picture of the Revolutionary War soldier I was talking about. It's actually the header. Yeah, let me grab it real quick here. Um, and next, next to it, you'll see a handprint that's actually on my wall. Now, yeah, that thing is. is very small. That's it, It's very small, and it's on my ceiling. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, do you I, see the little girl's face? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the selfie picture and then the one with my face? Yep. If you see that red circle, do you see what's in that red circle? The little object, that black object standing? Yeah, it's a little uh it's like a little, a little discombobulated for me, but what is that in that circle? That's a uh I would imagine that's a dark spirit. You can see his feet and his hands and all that. And then okay. next to him is an angel and she's praying. I mean, we got everything here, dude. We got wow. angels. We got ghosts. We got demons. Mm-hmm. I, I even think I might have an alien or two. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, again, uh, <laughs> Charles's uh, Twitter is at B-K-L-Y-N, all in caps, underscore capital H for and then haunting. So – at Brooklyn Haunting. Make sure to look that up on Twitter. We'll put that link up as well in the description uh, for the podcast and on the podcast one page for. I'd like, the I'd like to say I'd like to say one thing. I, I sure. like debating people. Okay, sure. I believe in free will. I believe in people that have their own minds. Mm-hmm. You want to say something to me? I'm talking about the people out there that might want to talk to me. Go ahead, talk to me, ask me a question, but just do it respectfully. Okay, don't come on and demean me or degrade me. Because I'm not the one. <laughs> All right. It, okay. It, it, uh, and I take it uh, you're you're from Brooklyn, so you like a good fight. <laughs> no. I, no, I, I know. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking I'm with you, Charles. I'm a very peaceful person. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you want to talk to me? Like I said, I like free will thinkers. Mm-hmm. I'm actually a chief operating officer by career. Mm-hmm. You know, I run staffs. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I'm a good manager, okay? If you want to have it out with me. We can go in my office. You could call me every filthy, nasty, disgusting name on the planet, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'll respect you. But if you do it on the floor, I'm gonna have to let you go. But if you if you do it with <laughs> me in, in private, then I'm gonna, you know, you can have your voice. I, I don't believe in silencing people, right? Okay. Right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's what that's what causes strife. Mm-hmm. If you silence somebody, that's why you have men running around killing their wives because they're silenced. They're not allowed. Like when you're in family court, they tell you to shut the F up, sit down. You have no voice. You, you, you're not allowed to say anything. And that's very frustrating. Yes, it can be. It can be. Um, let me uh, – let's get back to this house here, uh, Charles, because sorry, there's, there's – No, it's okay. There's, there's, um, there's something that intrigues me here, and you keep mentioning the name Kit. Tell me exactly who the spirit named Kit is. Okay. As uh, much as you've learned. Kit is a nine-year-old little girl. Okay. She has very long black hair that comes up to her, uh, like, forehead. Mm -hmm. It's cut somewhat like a, I would say, a 60s style. And if you look at my videos, you'll see her face. She has manifested herself through the mirror while reflecting in the mirror. Uh, And... I don't know. Somehow, some way, this child has connected herself to me. And she telepathically talks to me. And, like, I mean, who the hell films mirrors in the first place? She taught me to do this. Hmm. Who films their refrigerator or goes out in the street and films their house? And uh, it's like an impulse. Go here. Go here. Do that. Take the camera out. Film now. You know, I'll tell you something. I never lose anything anymore. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let me ask you this. You say uh, Kit has talked telepathically to you, but how much has she told you about herself? Has she said she's from the 1960s? Has she told you anything about her life alive no. here on this planet? No. 
No. She's only she's only taught me what's going on. Hmm. How the how the dead are forced to stay here and they're surrounded by demons and it's a miserable life. And, you know, she wants to go home, I guess heaven. Uh, you know, I have videos where the spirits form the word God in the mirror. Okay. Okay. G O D. Three different entities form the word God. And they write God all over the house. I'm telling you, if investigation discovery would grow a pair and come over here, they would really see something. Sorry, I threw a shot at them. I've been trying to get their attention and they just uh, you, you, know. may, you may get it with that one there, Charles. Um, let me let me <laughs> throw a scenario at you that's come up on our show a lot. And I'm gonna throw this scenario at you because you mentioned kid is nine years old. Yes. Um We've heard of this scenario many times, and it's chilling to the bone when you think about it. But a lot of times, some of the more – and bear with me until I get it all out here, Charles. Yeah, and I'll, sure, th- go I'll ahead. throw it in your lap, and then I want your thought. Sometimes a lot of the more malevolent spirits will take the form of a child to bring somebody in, to bring them into their sphere of influence because you're more susceptible to want to listen to a child. And they'll pre- pre- present themselves in that form. And then that's when they kind of get you. That's when they rook you in. Does it seem to you that Kit is a genuine child spirit and maybe not someone trying to play you? Because the way that it comes across that we're all trapped here, that that there's no hope, that you you can't get across to the other side makes it seem that you're being set up to you're, I'll just put it out there that you're being set up for a fall that you're being set up to expect that there isn't anything on the other side when maybe there is for you um yeah I, I've I've uh, I've been dealt I've dealt with that no she's she's an actual spirit I've actually seen her father he's here too why I don't know I mean Maybe something happened here, but, you know, there was nothing here in the 60s. So, uh, and I've also seen what she has. I mean, I have videos, dude, that show faces of the grave, okay? The dead can show us how they look like in human form, and then they can show us how they look in the grave. Okay. And I have actual videos of that. That's freaky. That is freaky. Now, you have, you have pictures of what she looked like in the grave? Yes. It's got to be a little bit disturbing. Why why did she want to show you what she looked like in the grave? I'm just curious. I don't think they I don't think they can control that. I think it's whatever comes out. And you said her father is there too. Is, is it yeah, because I, the, I, Is it because, because the father is there to protect her or or that it's just we're all together as a family here on earth, we're all together as a family over there? I can't explain it. I, I don't know. I just know that her father is here as well. I've hmm. seen his light, and it's huge. His light is like a is like a spotlight, and I have video of it. It's huge. There's no way that that can be a bug or or, or a dust orb. This thing is huge. Very interesting. Because I've summoned I've summoned him, and and he and that's what I've seen. And well, I've seen his face. I've seen his face in my in my mirror also. Well, reflecting. What was it about you that that Kit was attracted to? Did did it, did she say? Did she say it? You feel like like my father's energy, or you feel like you're familiar to me, or you feel like a family member? Did she say something? Is there a reason why she came to you in particular? It's my conjecture and my belief that. From 2010 to 2012, which was the time span that I knew nothing about this haunting, but knew something was wrong, okay, that I was cursed or I don't know, because every time I turned around, I was hurting myself. Like I said, it was like the house itself was like reaching out for me. To this day, I have to literally walk on the street watching myself. If I take my eyes off myself for one second, I get hurt. Like there was a clairvoyant child here, a friend of my daughter, 
And this is before I knew anything. She came up to me and said, are you aware you have three spirits running running around with you? And I said, what? You know, because I was a skeptic. I was like, what are you, crazy? Get down, you know, and, and, uh, boys in white coat, aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she said, no. She said, I'm clairvoyant. And you got a lot of activity going on in the house. I've seen them. But you have three actual entities with you. You have a demon, you have an angel, and you have a ghost. The ghost hangs around with you for protection. The angel hangs around for your protection. And the demon is just like out to get you. <laughs> hmm. And ironically, that selfie picture that you see on my Twitter page in the background is an angel, is a dark entity, and then there's another one in that actual... Now, the other thing that brings validity to that selfie picture is I have nine others that form in unison by timestamp to form that actual picture. Like, you can see the background getting uh, clearer and clearer, and then boom, it just catches that. Another thing is that I don't take selfie pictures. And for some reason, I was just motivated to do it that day. This was December of 2014, by the way. Okay. But no, I, I, I believe that Kit is an actual uh, spirit. And I believe that, you know, you know that one dead person can speak to the world's dead. So I believe, and I'm sorry, this is going to piss a lot of people off. You know, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want this. I didn't need this. I didn't have to have this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I accept it. I accept whatever's been done to me. I accept it, and I'm going to prove it. Okay. Okay. The, she, I think she spoke to the other world's dead and said, "Look at this guy. Look at everything that he has dealt with in the past two years." Okay, my ex-wife alone will make you eat a bullet. Never <laughs> mind having loose. <laughs> never mind having Lucifer on your butt for two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I have been. Brought to the ground, okay? I mean, really, I have been brought to the ground where I just say I give up. And just out of nowhere, the strength comes inside me and I just go on and I just rise up and I say to the devil, I say, you know what? You hit like a bitch. I'm still standing. And, you know, you have to, even his demons, you have to respect that. When you, when you see someone like that have such courage, and strength. And I'm sorry if that sounds vain. You know, I'm an Aries. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry if that, you know, but I think that they came to a collective whole and said, him. Let's give him the right to see us, to film us, to capture us. Because, dude, if you look at my videos, I have the greatest evidences that have ever been caught. And like I said, I can do this live. The only reason I don't have CNN at my bathroom door with their cameras is because of my landlord and his family. I will not suffer an innocent for monetary gain. It's not right. It's not fair. And, you know, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I know one day I'm going to have the media outside my door. But at that point, there'll be a deal in place, you know, whatever. But. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, this is, this is like my job now. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't have my other job because I haven't been able to find a job in, in, in seven freaking years. <laughs> hmm. And, and trust me, I'm an executive. Okay. I'm an efficiency expert. I go into companies and I straighten them out where my predecessor has failed and I am an expert at it. And I have executives calling me on the phone, telling me they want to meet with me. And then two seconds later, they're gone. I had one executive that actually died on me the very day that he called me. Really? Yeah. I, I, I have a, 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 I'm, being, I'm being fought. I'm being fought by some serious supernatural mm -hmm. forces, man. Like, before I was coming on to this show, I must have hurt myself 25 times. This morning I woke up, I bashed my foot into the door. Hmm. And then I cut my hand and uh, oh, computers didn't work. I couldn't use my Metro card. I, I had to pay an extra. It, it was insane. But the weird thing is, and I'll post a picture of this on my Twitter page, 
is I was actually going in, going at it with Lucifer, and I said, you know what? When it's my turn, I'm gonna rip your world apart, dude. <laughs> I was like screaming at him on the train station, and a butterfly came down and flew on a sign that I was standing next to. It's like the most beautiful butterfly you ever saw. And it was just sitting there as a sign saying, you know what, just keep going on. Just keep doing what you're doing. I find dimes. I find paper clips. I find diamonds and jewelry. The diamonds and jewelry, that's actually from the spirit. That's like gifts. They give you gifts. I'm like a freaking metal detector, man. You could put me in a parking lot. I'll find every quarter, every dime, every piece of jewelry that's there. Now, the paper clips is from God. That's his way of saying, you know what? Keep doing what you're doing. The dimes, that's angels. That's their way of saying, you know, keep, it's a validation from heaven that you're validated to keep doing what you're doing. And then the numbers that I'm haunted by on the clock, 12, 12, 10, 10. 1234, you know, these are angel numbers. It's all motivation to, you know, to just keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. But then, Charles, I got to throw this at you. Then you get this motivation. Don't stop. Keep going, Charles. Keep doing what you're doing. But then at the end, you're just going to end up, you know, at the end of your life existing with demons anyway. So what's the point? Well, that, the, the, the point is if you have faith, you can whoop their ass on the other side. <laughs> but you know isn't that saying? an eternal fight? I mean, isn't there supposed to be the reward of going to heaven at the end of this whole deal? I can't, I can't explain it. You know, God has his own, you know, what he does. You know, the, the thing is, everyone thinks the sap God is up there, this is, is, uh, is uh, forgiving repetitive sin. You know, to have forgiveness from, from, from the Father, is you have to have remorse, Okay. You have to feel true remorse. And if you feel true remorse of something that you've done, that it brings you to the point of tears, then you're not going to do it again. But these people, they just keep doing it over and over and over again because they believe uh, uh, news feeds like the Huffington Post and all these things and these liberals. Oh, you can just do whatever you want. It's okay. God's going to forgive you. No. Okay? If anything the Bible depicts, and I'm sorry to say it, it's going to make a lot of people mad. God's a prick. Okay. God is like the father in, uh, in that movie with, uh, uh, what's the name of that movie? The, oh, my brain just races. I, um, you're a little yeah. muffled right now. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, uh, I'm sorry. There the, we the, go. There we go. God is like the father in, in the, uh, the movie with, the, um, Oh God! <laughs> well, uh, well, I I get what you're saying that he's he's a little he's stern he's he's more than just a little I stern. Can't even, I can't even think of the actor's name. And you know what, Charles? I would agree with it. I I think that people think it's just a little too easy. You go to church. Boys in the hood. Boys in the hood. Oh yeah, Lawrence, yeah. Uh, uh, Lawrence, like uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Right. Yeah. He's a he's a good father, but he's strict. Right. Right. Okay. And, you know, there's all these people, there all these people doing all these things like God hates gay people. No. Who are you to say that? Personally, I've never seen God come out of the clouds and say he hates gay people. All these, these the religious right who are the biggest lunatics on the planet, okay, sit there and they beat their chest with the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a failed policy. It was written by man. Okay, Mm -hmm. God entrusted man because that's what he's always doing. He's always laying it on somebody else. He never does anything himself. He's always giving it to other people. (laughs) He he entrusted man to write his laws. And what man did was alienated God from man. Because if you make something fear you, okay, they're not going to love you. They're going to want to cut your freaking head off and forget about you. And that's not what God wanted to do. So he sent Christ, uh, a CEO of heaven. To bring the new law, the New Testament, and that's what law—that's what testament means: Mm -hmm. law and will. Mm -hmm. And if you read the New Testament, okay, all the way from the beginning to the end, at the end, Jesus turns around because he's seen it for himself. He said, "You know what? Forget everything else. Just love each other. That's all I want you to do. Just love each other. Because if you do love each other, 
right? Then everything in the beginning and the end collates with itself. It corroborates. Because it, like I said in the beginning, if you love something, then you protect it. But we don't love each other. And that's why we're condemned here. That's why we stay here and we wait. And I don't know how long we wait, but I think it's a long time before you know, we go to heaven or wherever we're placed. So you think that maybe we were tested in the afterlife before we're given that reward to, to go to heaven? Maybe. Or maybe it's God's, God's mercy that, you know, somebody dies that's close to you like a child or whatever, and uh, that child is with you. Mm-hmm. And you feel that child because there have been many accounts where people say, I feel my deceased loved one with me. They've spoken to me. I've heard them. I've seen them. And then you have the skeptics like Michael Shermer, James Randi, and Penn Jillette that argue it away. It's dust dogs or reflection off light or whatever. Yeah. You know, the ironic thing is, is that these three bastards, excuse my language, they're going to be a light, show themselves or reflect themselves in a mirror. And somebody like them is going to argue them away as nothing but a dust orb or a reflection in light or whatever. That's poetic justice. Let me go one step further with it. Charles, with you, you know, there's. Uh, I, I'm I've, gonna, actually I'm gonna spo- throw- I've actually spoken to Penn Jillette, by the way. Have you? He won't. Yes. He won't talk to us, which is kind of funny. I've, I've had many discussions with me, with him, and he actually begged me to stop sending him my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> really? I wish he would. Uh, I wish he would talk to us. We'd like to have him on the show. Um, there's um. There was an interesting uh, Twitter battle last week between. Um, WWE superstar Roman Reigns and a uh, and a WWE fan, and at one point it, it had to do with uh, Hurricane Irma, and he had said something about putting prayers out there for for uh, the people in the path of Irma to make sure that they were safe. And a guy who was a, a devout atheist came up and and just basically challenged Roman Reigns and said, "Well, if there was a god, he would uh, he would take away hurricanes." And basically, they got into it from there. So I would ask this, and in, in basically, you want to you want to you want to hear something funny? If I could just interject for sure. a second, go ahead. This is before I knew that the place was haunted, or whatever, and I'm pretty sure that the dead witnessed this, and it was one of their reasons for saying, you know, him. Mm-hmm. I took on 125 atheists on one of my Facebook pages, 125 atheists for over eight hours, and at the end, one atheist turned around and said to me. What Bible rock did you crawl out from under? Because somehow I just caught the feed. <laughs> okay? You have all these atheists on this. this uh, and I'd like to say that if there's any atheists listening to this, you're closer to the Father than you know. Okay? Because religion is not God. God is not religious. He is a spiritual being. You're hating the Father because of what man is doing on behalf of man, not on behalf of God. When one of these crazy bastards like Fred Phelps from the West Barrow Baptist Church may rest in wherever he is, okay, they're not, they're, 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 they're saying what they want to say. They're not speaking on behalf of the Father. Anybody that does anything that contradicts the word, meaning the New Testament, they are a liar, they are a con artist, and they are a charlatan. And that's what God is pretty much upset about. He is tired of everyone listening to the fake. Anyway, uh, well, that's, that, that's right. kind of where I was. The, the question I was going to ask about atheists is, you know, atheists don't believe that God exists. Oh, oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, I'm an old man. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> I, I lose. I lose thought. That's all right. But after that person said that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, what Bible rock did you crawl out from under? Blah, blah, blah. Another atheist came along and said, guess, guess what he said? Maybe God sent him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I swear to God, my hand to God, this guy said maybe God sent him. And then the 125 atheists went off me and ripped him apart. What are you talking about? How could you say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think he... I actually took on 25 of Glenn Beck's faithful one day. Three days, me and 25 of the, right, of the, of the, uh, the Christian right. Three days later, you know what they said to me? We give up. Oh, they I, wanted to get rid of me. They couldn't. I'm, I don't quit. I I can see that. 
Um, Charles, let me ask you this though. Let's get back to the original question. The original I mean, question. I mean, I made the I made the great pendulette. I mean, if you look at his his persona, mm-hmm. he's a badass son of a bitch. He is. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I got him to plead with me on my Twitter page, and I have it as record. Please stop sending me these pictures. I would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, you know, I. Yeah, I think you probably wore him down too. <laughs> and then I and then I and then I made him tell me. I said, "You know what, M- Mr. Gillette, I'll honor your request. You don't want to see any more pictures or videos or whatever. Just answer me one question. Do you see what I'm sending you?" And he responded, "No." And I honored my agreement. I haven't sent him anything else. I go after these three people, and that's who the dead have charged me to go after. They want me to go after these three men. Pen Gillette Michael Shermer and uh, and James Randi. Do you know that I started going after James Randi and he stopped that million dollar uh, uh, contest if you can prove life after death, or whatever. Well, now it, in all fairness, too, I, I mean the, the million dollar challenge, as far as I know, is still going on by the foundation. He hasn't done it though, personally. I've written to the foundation so many times. None of these bastards. None of these people that have these 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 uh, these contests to prove life after death. Like there's one bastard in California. He has a hundred thousand dollar bounty on anyone that can prove life after death. He, I said, you know what? I'm a legal person actually. Also, I'm a I'm a recognized mediator before the civil court in New York. I know the law like the back of my hand. I said, you have this contest going, right? And I sent him all my stuff. And you know what he said to me? It's nothing. Uh, he asked, I have his email. It's nothing. It means nothing. There's nothing that proves anything here. I'm like, you know what? You need to send someone to my house and see this for themselves. He wouldn't do it. And I said, you know what? Under the law, I could sue you because you're not giving me the right to prove my case. And I said, you know what would happen after I sued you? You would have the California uh, Attorney General so far up your butt that you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to sit there and wonder if you had any more crap on your ass when you got off the toilet bowl. He'd be there to tell you. Well, Charles, you, you've played uh, games at the carnival, right? Or you've played games on the midway? What's that? You've I'm played sorry. games games at the carnival or games on the midway, right? You know, like the, the yeah. ring toss or, you know, where you try to shoot a basketball and the, I, the basketball hoop done. that's a little too small. I haven't done anything in the past seven years. I mean, I've been, essentially, what, I have been I have been poor. Well, like when really, you when you were like, younger, you did that, didn't you? Yes, yes, okay. I did. And, and you know how incredibly difficult it is to to win those games because they're set up a certain way, correct? That's that's no, the if, paranormal but, million dollar challenge. Um, it's set up a certain way, and you have to play by their rules. And if you don't do it exactly that way, you're not going to win the million dollars. And I don't know how to tell you this, my friend, but I don't think anyone's winning that million dollars. In Trust a nutshell. me, you get me. You get me in an arena. With Penn Gillette, Michael Shermer, and James Randi, or the RJEF, or whatever, I'll show them ghosts in that arena, and I'll show them their soul also. And I have, I have done this challenge. I have asked these three people to, to honor this challenge, and they, they, they won't because they know I can prove it. They see what I send them, okay? They see it. If Penn Gillette himself is going to answer me, that means that he sees it and he's appeasing me because he knows that me and him are going to go to war one day and I'm going to tear him apart. Because he said to me, you know, I hope that we do meet and you're a gentleman about it, whatever. Because he knows, he sees it. He sees what I'm sending him. True, but, you know, the, the uh, I'll just throw this out there too, and and don't crucify me for it, Charles. No, but I'm he not, might I'm be not, just a, he might just be appeasing you too because he probably feels like after a while you might just go away. That, let him grow a pair. Of, let him grow a pair of balls and bring his girlfriends with him to this house. Okay, mm-hmm. like I said, never mind. The, never mind the mirrors. Never mind the pictures. Never mind anything. The house, the walls, the ceilings, the windows, the writing from one part of the house to the other part of the house. That validates it, okay? Because there is no way that it can be done by a human. It is absolutely – you've seen it. But the, the million-dollar challenge is something different, Charles. It's in a lab setting and done with with approved 
equipment. So it's it's probably not even your equipment that they're that you're using. So then that way they know the way the way that these scientists have it done. Because I spoke to a very well known scientist who spoke to me under anonymity. He said, in order for you to win these contests, mm-hmm. you have to do something that can be reproducted. Yeah. Meaning I do it and then they can do it also. They can reproduce what I did. And that's how they skirt their challenges. Because one person has authority to, like Constantine, right? Let's say uh, the, the, the guy Constantine, Keanu Reeves, who I met actually on the street one day in, in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he, he plays this character, Constantine. Yep. He can see demons, he can see ghosts, he can see him, but nobody else can. Because he has an authority. God himself has given him a special authority. So this is, this is the way that they get away with it. But they're not going to be able to do that with me. Trust me. When I get my notoriety and I get my exposure, I'm going to when I'm done with these three dudes, they're going to need therapy. And they're going to say, maybe. That's the word that's going to come out of their mouth. Maybe. They're not going to agree. They're not going to say that it is. But they're going to say maybe. They're going to leave this house and they're going to say maybe. Because, like I said, the walls, the, the, the handprints, the, the, the names, the letters, the numbers, the pictures, the, it's insane. It's, it's insane. Well, Charles, you know, let's, let's mention this too, that, that eventually you would like to uh, turn this, uh, the, the, the ability to find these spirits into some sort of television project, right? Yes, I'm seeking an investor that I can sit down with and would be willing to fund a online show. I want to go because my area is, is seasons of material. Okay, I have an authority. I have an ability to do something where I can show the world the paranormal. I can show them the dead like they have never seen it. Okay, mm-hmm. and I know that that's a value. And I know people are going to come after me. Oh, you want to make money from this? Hell yeah, I want to make money from this. You know, if this is my job and this is what I have to do, I've suffered, okay? I have suffered everything in the past seven years. To, to, I mean, four years, excuse me. I mean, I've been doing it for seven years, but it's been four years since it's been brought to my attention, since Mm -hmm. I've known. And, and, you know, it's going to, this is what I'm going to do. And if I can go into a house, and I, I mean, why can't I have my own paranormal show? What's so bad about it? Understandable. Um, let me ask you this uh, one last question here, uh, Charles. Uh, before we, I mean, I want to. There, there's a beauty to the paranormal. It's not exactly how Hollywood. If you want, uh, uh, Tim. Yep. If you go on my channel, you'll see two videos. One video, the spirits show me the galaxy. It's actually a very beautiful video. All these colors, you can see. Uh, I can't even explain it. And then recently I did a video where they actually showed me Earth from space. Hmm. Now, how can you do this with mirrors? I mean, I, one guy I showed it to in a deli mm-hmm. and he said, it looks like you're looking out of a window. I said, I don't have any windows in my bathroom. <laughs> hmm. It's just a fit. And, and, and that's another thing. Dust orbs come from dust. It's not a construction site or whatever. It's a freaking bathroom. There's no dust in there. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, let me ask you this before uh, before we leave you tonight, Charles. Um, do you believe now you said you would like to turn it into a, a television show, but do you believe that there's enough for a movie of your life there or a movie of at least the, the house that you're in there in Brooklyn? Yeah, definitely. It's not a television show. I want to do an online thing mm-hmm. where, you know, we have like a subscription or something. And I want to point out to all the naysayers, ah, ah, ah. I get my show because I was homeless since I was eight years old. I know what it's like to be homeless. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I walk by a homeless person, I'm not looking at a homeless person. I am that homeless person. I was homeless from the time I was eight until I was like 19. Okay. I lived on the streets of the of 42nd Street. I lived in Covenant House. I know what it's like to, to suffer. And if I did get my show, trust me, a great deal of money would be used to help people. And I'm saying that publicly. A great deal of money will be used to help people out there. If I walk by you and I pass you and you're suffering, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop that suffering. 
If I walk by a homeless person, I'm going to say to him, you know, that's my greatest wish. And I, my hand to God may be condemned to hell if I'm lying. Where do you want your house built? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Uh, again, if you want to check out uh, Charles and his uh, and his uh, YouTube page, it's a Brooklyn haunting. YouTube.com, a Brooklyn haunting. Uh, check out the videos for yourself. Charles Brandon is in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, his house is definitely a, a strange haunting at that. And uh, all the videos are there on that YouTube uh, site. We will put up a link to the YouTube site uh, on the description for the podcast and on the uh, darkness or beyond the darkness page at uh, podcast one. We'll also put up a link to his Twitter so you can follow him on Twitter as well. Uh, Charles, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry if I was, you know, maybe a little bit too passionate. Uh, No, passion's a good thing. My friend passion is always a a very good thing. Uh, Folks want to remind you that uh, tomorrow Dave will be back and also want to remind you about the Chicago ghost con. It's coming up the weekend of October 6th. Be sure to get your tickets Uh, right now at darknessevents.com. Once again, darknessevents.com. And don't forget that Dave is hosting Coast to Coast AM this weekend. Check your listings at coasttocoastam.com. That's coasttocoastam.com for a station in your area where you can listen to Dave uh, or you can uh, go to knsi.com. That's where Dave does the show live from. And you can listen on knsi.com or at their app. Uh, As Dave does the show live, I believe Friday night he's got Michael Nesmith on from the Monkees. So a huge weekend. You'll be able to hear Dave Friday and Saturday night on Coast to Coast AM as well. He'll be back tomorrow night and we'll bring you more of the strange and supernatural here on Beyond the Darkness.
on Beyond the Darkness.